So, Buck, what does this case look like going forward? You know, we have the November 8th uh, hearing on the preliminary injunction, but these cases can sometimes take, you know, months, years to adjudicate. Um, do you think that we could be seeing here a potential precedent to, you know, really curb back cancel culture? I think of, you know, the Liberty Justice Center, which immediately I think of the 2018 case of Janus v. AFSCME, where, you know, you had the free speech rights of those who refused to join a union being violated by being forced to pay for effectively union dues, even though they chose not to. Um, and that case set a very important free speech precedent. Do you think that this case is at all similar? And do you think this will have the impact that Dr. Cuban hopes it might? Well, I can't predict that, but I agree with what Dr. Cuban said. This is a very important case from a free speech standpoint because I think so many doctors and physicians are silenced and they're afraid to speak out. And what Dr. Cuban mentioned uh, that, that this case is about, he hopes it, it empowers and encourages other physicians to speak out when something uh, or when they don't believe that something is being uh, conveyed properly. So more speech is always better than less speech. And, you know, to answer your question, um, we, we're going to ask for the, the doctor. We've asked for Dr. Cuban to be restored to his position. We're going to ask for at that hearing that he be restored um, before the end of this year, because uh, currently his position has not been refilled by Governor Gordon. So it's an open position. There's supposed to be eight members on the Board of Medicine, and currently there are only seven. Uh, beginning in January, the legislature will reconvene, and um, whoever is appointed to the board has to be uh, confirmed by the advice and consent of the Senate. So we think that could be you know, problematic. We don't want someone to be reappointed when we're trying to get Dr. Cuban reinstated to his position, uh, rightfully so. And so we think that could cause a, a, a time crunch. So we're gonna ask for that at the hearing uh, before the end of the year. So I can't predict uh, you know, when the judge uh, might issue a ruling, uh, but that's why these preliminary injunction motions are brought, because when there's a situation like this, where if Dr. Cuban had to wait a year and a half or two years to trial before he got restored to his position, it really, at that point, the, the win is, is not really a win. So that's why you have these situations legally under the rules to provide for a situation like that. So we are going to, you know, request, uh, you know, reinstatement as soon as possible. And if we win, then the other side could appeal to the 10th Circuit. And if we don't win, we could appeal immediately to the 10th Circuit. So, so yes, it could be precedent setting in that, uh, in that sense, but it's hard. It's always hard to predict that. If I, if I knew that, I would have, I would have figured that out a long time ago.